Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Hello everyone, this is Danny Lambert with Plush Republic. Uh, considering that my original segment introduction video uh, got so much traction, I've had a lot of people requesting more content for that, uh, I figured I would go ahead and make an additional video showing you how you can use uh, identify and track events within Node.js um, to track important uh, server-side actions. Um, so the reason why I'm going to do this the way that I am uh, is I kind of think of them in a couple of different buckets. In the previous video, I had shown you how to use uh, client-side via a Google Tag Manager implementation to track uh, web form submissions. Uh, and I think that client-side events are completely fine, like page views, uh, identifying track calls on like corporate site forms. That's all well and good. Um, but I think you need a little bit more reliability uh, when it comes to major events within a customer life cycle within your product. Uh, such as uh, logging in, registering a user, maybe even purchases, um, you would be the judge of what you think an event that you should set client-side versus server-side is because uh, it'll vary how much you have the logic and callbacks, etc. Um, but for this one, I'll show you for this little tiny app that I spun up uh, that I'm working on how I would track uh, new user registrations on the server-side using Node as opposed to on the client-side. So the first thing that I did was I went ahead and found the Node.js docs. Uh, so if you're using PHP or Java, Ruby, whatever, you would obviously use whatever docs correspond to, to what you're coding in, um, but I'm using Node. So the first thing I did was I grabbed uh, npm install code and I ran that, uh, so I installed the packages there, and then I had to get uh, a segment set up within my application. Uh, so on my app.js, I just came in here and did analytics equals required and analytics-node and then analytics equals new analytics and then what my uh, key is. And that's right out of here. You can pull this out of their docs. And for your key, you would find it within your sources. You come here, settings, and then API keys, and you have your right key right here. Uh, so that's where you'd be getting that information. Once that is set up, you've installed uh, the node package, you've set up uh, these two dependencies here, you will now have uh, segment installed server side on a node application. So also for me, in this instance, since I'm doing it on my register routes from a new user registration, I had to set that up uh, in my routes pages as well. So my goal ultimately is now on this site, Trailblazers. This is gonna be up in a couple days. You guys should check it out, trailblazers.com. But here is my staging environment, which is hosted locally. Um, on this register route, I want to, when someone fills out this form, create a new user uh, using their username uh, and what other, any other traits, like hypothetically this email that I want to then push into whatever other databases I want, maybe into some of my BI tools. Um, but this is the event that I would like to do on the server side so I could have callbacks uh, to check for errors, to check for uh, proper authentication on login, all of that good stuff. So once I had that available, it's actually pretty simple. Um, using my setup, as soon as I get that router.post to then post this new registered user to the database, um, I know that I should wait until uh, post the passport authentication. It should be you know down here before I redirect. But just for the sake of this video, I'm showing it up here for, for simplicity's sake. All I then need to do is call analytics.identify with the criteria that I want, and then analytics.track. So if you see it in their documentation, the required trait is the user ID. Here I have the ability to use a couple of things. Right, I could use the email address, I could use the username, or I could use, in my case, um, the ID that's going to be generated, uh, the unique ID. Uh, I'm, for the sake of this uh, use case, I'm just going to use the username. A lot of times I prefer to use uh, the email ID. So what I'm going to track is analytics.identify. They've given me that username now that they've submitted that form. And I also want to take their email, which comes in through that form submission. So when they come here, they go username, password, email. They hit submit. And then in my application, I do analytics.identify. 
user.id and I'm taking that request.body.username, so that username from that form submission. Then I'm also taking the additional traits, which is in, in its own object, uh, email, which is the email from that field. Then after I have identified this user, I will immediately call analytics.track, uh, which is tracking the event of the user registration. So I take that user ID that I just identified with and I associate a new event with it that is new user registration. And that's all that it would take uh, in this circumstance. Obviously, there should be uh, after I've already uh, confirm that the that the uh, new user registration went through, but that's all it takes for you to identify and to track a new user uh, within Node. And you have the flexibility, like it shows in their documentation, to add additional traits. If you have plans and pricing for sign up uh, for purchases, all of that, you can tack on as much additional criteria as you want, and then it will relay this to the database. Uh, so then I'll go ahead now and show you what that looks like on the back end. I'll log in. Actually, I already had this open. So here's my source that was already set up. We went through how to do this uh, in the previous video. And now I'm going to go ahead and test it. So I come in, I go register, I'm going to say test3, password, and test3 at gmail.com. And I sign up. Everything went well because it gave me this redirection here to the home page. So when I come into my debugger, I should now see uh, an identify call right here, test3 at gmail.com with that user ID and the email, and then that track event with that new user registration for the user ID test3 event new, new user registration. So that's perfect. That's exactly what I want to happen when a new user registers. I've now identified them. Uh, remove the an anonymous ID, associate all of their previous activity with this newly tracked user ID, and then I've associated that new user registration event. And now I can set up that for my login routes, my logout routes, wherever else I feel it's important to have them. Um, but that's the you know the easiest way, and in, in my opinion, to set up um, server side tracking for Node. So if you guys have any questions about that, please let me know, and also let me know what other content that you'd like to see. Uh, it's very easy for me to spin it up, but there's so many unique use cases that you probably have, uh, maybe relaying this to various different destinations. Uh, let me know, and I'd be happy to make a video. Hopefully this helps. Have a great day.